Yes, I have recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Sega fan. <laughs> For yeah. that out. <laughs> if you guys are wondering where last week's episode is on the YouTube channel, it's not going to be there because Jason forgot to hit record along with broadcast. So. It's in the ether. ether, <laughs> ether, ether. Hey everybody, and welcome to From a Mother's Basement. I'm Jason. And I am Michael. And, and I am way low on my camera. Let me adjust that. <laughs> Michael, what have you been up to? Well, actually, I know what you've been up to. How is uh, Warlords of, uh, of Draenor? Warlords of Draenor is freaking awesome, um, or, 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 or World of Civilization, or Civilization of Warcraft. Um, I managed to get my character to 100, um, and <clears throat> I'm going through doing a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a fun, it's fun. Um, the enhanced system of the, uh, well, we'll get the garrisons in a minute. Okay. One thing they did right that I really liked is you remember me going on about about busting my ass to get the legendary cloak? Yes. Which I got. It, by the time you're done with the legendary cloak quest, it was uh, eye level 613, or 616. For the first time ever, <laughs> Blizz was honestly made it to where you're not replacing your epic legendaries in the first two levels with greens <laughs> that are drops. I mean, I actually... Up, I didn't get a cloak that is a higher eye level than my legendary cloak until just before I hit 100. Wow. So, so it I was mean, worse to level up then in that yeah. situation. Okay. So you actually, I mean, for once, a legendary is actually good throughout your leveling experience. And then mm -hmm. and I got one that's better by like two, two eye level points. Mm -hmm. But... It doesn't look as cool as my <laughs> legendary. So I'm like, you gotta have the aesthetic as well. You don't fucking well. sacrifice two points for my legendary to look cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. It really is. There's, it's really nice the way they've redone. You know, well, redone uh, what they did with you know, because for those who play the game, Draenor <laughs> is effectively Outland. Mm -hmm. Outland is what happens to Draenor after the Burning Legion hit, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. I, the graphics are stunning. The the designs are at, are beyond epic there's the new models for various critters look fantastic the mm -hmm. gameplay is impressive dungeons are harder than hell well, okay let's, let me rephrase that they're not the dungeons themselves aren't particularly hard and shadar's gonna laugh at me um <laughs> there's one there are mechanics in one dungeon that uh pissed me off last night <laughs> because there's a thing where you have to go and there's this wind blowing mm -hmm. and you have to walk along the edge and then you have to walk in and along and up i'm walking along this thing i didn't realize that that was a specific mechanic of that part you just i just thought it's like okay you have to walk along the edge you have to walk along and go in to get up to the stairs and it's just it's atmospheric there's nothing you can do to affect it turn it all off or on anything like that okay so i'm going around i'm, I'm running i'm running I'm going, no 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 shit <laughs> As it blows me off the edge, not <laughs> once, twice, and the third time, you know, Shadar's like, "Okay, you need to do, th you know, try running on the inside." So I try running on the inside, and it started mm -hmm. blowing. I'm like, "No, no, 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 no!" And she, her priest has got this, this, uh, this uh, what we call the "get over here" spell. The, you mm -hmm. know, the "get over here." So I'm, I'm about to fall out. She's like, Phew. <laughs> "Jerks my character <laughs> up to the ledge." So yeah, that was that was that was all sorts of uh, well. I, I, I have fun. to say it this way. I mean, I'm I don't have it yet myself, but I have to say though that when you have a game like this, when you're gonna be bumping up another ten levels for people who've been playing it for let's face it years, you want to yeah. make it challenging to a point to where it's basically um, worth their time not only just to get all the lore out there, but to get something that they're like, holy shit, this game is still challenging me. You know. Well, there is that. There's some of that. I mean, okay, the thing is. All the challenge isn't so much in the leveling. I mean, there is some. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, realistically, I should not. Admittedly, I played a grip ton of time, but you know, I, I, I'm I'm actually mildly disappointed that I was able to max level in less than a week. Because my character hit level 100. I want to say Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. Um, and I did a lot of play time, but the uh, um, <laughs> sorry. The uh, that said, it still it was challenging, and the end game stuff. There's actually reason to play the end game. Okay. The garrisons are interesting. They add a lot of interesting bits. The big thing about, and I, I don't, I can't go into it for spoiler purposes, but the feels. Oh my freaking god, Blizzard with the freaking feels this game. 
this expansion has had more feels type hits mm-hmm. than all the expansions before put together. Now, are these feels of like tugging the strings, uh, tugging the heartstrings, or are we talking like Tamahome kind of thing? Um, tugging the heartstrings. Okay. Um, okay. Not 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 feels as in uh, smarmy. Okay. Um, like care. <laughs> And what's funny is a couple of them introduce potential paradoxes. <sighs> well, given the um, fact they were okay, went back let's put in this way. Time, there are yeah. characters who are established canon characters mm-hmm. who die, right? And they get replaced. You know, some stuff goes on. The problem with this mm-hmm. is by going through the dark portal, you're 35 years in the past before the initial inva- you, initial horde you, invasion. You go into pre-fucked uh, Overland, basically. Yeah, you're going into pre-fucked Overland, mm-hmm. or Outland, rather. Or Outland, sorry. Um, and, you know, major characters, in one case, a faction leader, mm-hmm. and no, it's not Rin or Thrall, okay. um, die. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> um, and... Yeah, there was a little bit of emotion there. I mean, I wasn't particularly attached to that particular character, and I don't think really many people were. But still, it gets you a bit. And you're like, oh, my God. And then later on, you you, you uh, find the TARDIS, and the Doctor goes back and survives. I'm and waiting then... for that, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for a TARDIS to show up well, somewhere. Well, you have to um, think, though, that a lot of this is, has a, a ton of already set lore, and when you go back in time, things are going to change, but they're... To quote you know doctor who there are set moments in time that cannot be changed or that should not be changed so exactly so and and there are other theories about you know time would wrinkle its iron itself out somehow and i'm sure blizzard has given some thought to it but as as long as they don't go you know poof it was all a dream you know the amount of rage quit that would happen to be in the millions Okay, well, okay, it's not a spoiler to say this because Blizzard's been very public about this. Mm. The primar- One of the primary bad guys of this game, of this expansion, is Garage. Mm-hmm. Okay? Suffice it to say that you have to deal with Garage at some point. Okay. It's not, it's not a spoiler. It's Blizzard announced Blizzard that. has announced this, yes. There are, in that, in that confrontation with him, there are feels in that. And he's a bad guy. <laughs> well, that's just Blizzard. That's good writing on Blizzard's behalf. So. Oh yeah, no, the writing is phenomenal. I mean, it's really well written, but it's definitely um, uh, it's it's. I'm looking for. I'm going back now that I've got Pochi up to a hundred. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have a worgen named Pochi. That's it's awesome. Come on, it works. No, no, I've had a couple of people go like, "Why did you?" Oh, <laughs> anyway, um, and it's. I'm enjoying it. I, I want to go through the other dungeons, but I have to get my eye level up. <laughs> I'm only at 605. You need to be at 610. You, you have stuff to work on now. Yes, so. I have stuff to work on. Exactly. So, yeah, we got to get your butt in there, dude. Uh, yes, very much so. Once uh, some other issues your are... Your guilt misses you. Well, once some um, external issues are taken care of, that will be re- uh, resolved. Okay. Um, I will hold you to that. Good, because uh, I have a very thick skull and it requires <laughs> stuff hitting me time and time again before it finally cracks through. Uh, um, you're not that bad. But there are things that piss me off non-WoW related, and it has to be uh, trailers. In the fact, oh, God, yes. In the fact that we, we've talked about several times on the show before how some trailers give away far too much in, um, in a course of like two minutes. You've given out the, uh, the character uh, backgrounds. You've given out the... Um, not only the plot, but also the resolution to the entire the entire third act is mm-hmm. in the trailer. Yeah, the trailer's like, why should I see the movie? I just saw the, I just saw the cliff notes. Yes, and like I would say, on the other side of that uh, example of a good trailer is like the te- the first teaser trailer for Tomorrowland. Yeah, I it gave you an idea of wait, what the hell just happened? Is this other and, and what's Clooney doing? Yeah, it, it, exactly. <laughs> you you watch and you're like. It's one of those where you walk, you go backwards in it, and you start like, start analyzing it and trying to figure out more information because you're interested. It's got you right, hooked. right. You tear tear it apart, frame or or like some of the Avengers things. Oh, like yeah. that that whole uh, the the latest Age of Ultron one. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And <laughs> and everybody went back and picked it apart, oh, frame by frame by frame. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of subtle stuff in there. Yes, there is, and that's good planning on Marvel's behalf. Right. Um, Marvel and Whedon. <laughs> 
But then I have to say about this new thing that came out just yesterday um, for the upcoming uh, Jurassic Park 4, which you're calling Jurassic World. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Although, have you seen... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I just look at this and I'm like, okay, cool. It's a trailer. I want to check out the, see what they're going to go with this. Why is it a trailer for a trailer? I, I, I don't know. I mean... It's 15 seconds long, so I'm just going to play it right here. I mean, it's a, a hell of a lot of CG that's saying the park is open, you know, reminiscent of uh, iconic scenes from past epi- uh, past movies. But, dude, it, what's his name's in it? Um, Which one? The guy from Galaxy. Oh, yeah, from Chris Pratt. Guardians, Chris Pratt's in it. Yeah, I have no idea what's he doing in there. Um, but the thing is, why do we need a trailer for a goddamn trailer? Well, part of it, and what I think part of it is, is you're right, it, it's it's lame that it's a trailer for a trailer, but have you seen all the ARG that's with it? Mm-hmm. Have the, you? The, no, the website. Did you apply for internships? I did, yes, and I printed, <laughs> and I printed out a badge. <laughs> you bastard! I didn't know you could print out a badge. <laughs> when you apply, you get an email response later on, check your junk mail, and you can print out a badge. <laughs> okay, you have to, okay, I'll have to do that. Okay, yeah. Because I knew that they were taking applications for internships yes <laughs> and it was wow i'm trying to see how how, how deep they're going to go with the arg but no, i'm still jealous of you for those ncom badges you got <laughs> you bastard i will always have that oh you bastard i hope they do something similar for the next one oh speaking yeah. of which is there any news on that uh not that i, I know have... last i heard it was in pre-production not that i have seen no um i just basically just been trying to find more information um as things go on, and I haven't found anything for for uh, Tron uh, Tron Three, um, but I do have to say for like an ARG for Jurassic World, mm-hmm. the viral site's cool. There's a couple little hints and teasers in there and whatnot, um, but that's pretty much all we get. I mean, there is a nice bit there that, sh- that shows that um, B D Wong is back reprising his role as Henry Wu, uh, Doctor Henry Wu this time. So he's back. That's kind of cool. That whatnot. means he survived the first one. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I liked his character. The question I have, though, is that one of the viral sites links to Jurassic World, uh, their website. And it says the park's been open since 2005. And I'm like, you have a lot to explain. Well, no, that kind of makes sense because, you know, they're still, they're in the freaking Galapagos for crying out loud. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, what's it? Uh, Isla. Nubilar. Yeah, Nebular and, and the other one. You know, Site Isla, B. Isla Sorna, yeah. Now, now that's the question. Is this Site... Yeah, you know, we don't know any of the story. This is Isla Nubular. Okay. They went so, back and they redid so it, everything. So it's Site B? No, it's Site A. I thought Nebular... Oh, Nebular was Site I, Isla A? Isla Sorna was Site B. Okay. So they rebuilt Site A. Yes. Site B is still there, which means you've got cross-pollination of your pterodactyls. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> At the very least. I... Should be interesting. Yeah. Now, did, did Crichton write a fourth book? Nope. This is all Spielberg. It's all Spielberg. Because I know Crichton isn't going to write. If he hasn't, he's not going to because he's like dead. <laughs> 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 you know, it's kind of hard. Although that hasn't stopped other authors. Um, um, oh, God. L. Ron Hubbard, um, from writing from the grave. <laughs> Sorry, I had to remember who it was that did Scientology. Mm. But yeah, I, eh. I mean, this is a movie that I may or may not go see in theaters, but the fact that they're going to ex- or drag out any previews or trailers and whatnot like this, just to try to get more hype, you're going to get to the point where you can get like. I don't know if they're going to get stupid levels of hype like they got with, like, Snakes on a Plane, but... Snakes... Uh, yeah. Come on. The the hype was much, much better than the movie itself. Yeah, oh, I... Yeah, no, agreed. I agree. I mean, the best thing about that movie was Samuel L. Jackson. It's... Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, Parcel tongue, motherfucker. Do you speak it? <laughs> <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> but, yeah, I, mean, I, I look at this and yeah, we'll see what happens with it. Although I do have to say though that the there is rumors of another trailer that I'm actually definitely hyped to see, um, maybe coming out on Thanksgiving in front of either a single movie or every single movie in theaters, mm-hmm. which is uh, Star Wars Episode Seven. Yes. 
So, yeah, the rumor is Thanksgiving weekend it's going to show up in front of practically every movie. Nice. So, good way to uh, try to boost up those numbers for Big Hero 6. Well, that and there's actually another movie out. I, I don't know if it came out this week or if it's coming out next week that I really want to see. Hmm. Um, is the... Uh, the new Benedict Cumberbatch movie, uh, Imitation yes, Game. Yes, the Imitation Game looks amazing. Just, yeah. and for what it is, the story of what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people are going, oh, you know, Alan Turing was gay and da 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 I'm like, yeah, okay. Yes, he was. Yes. Yes. He we, was we, fucked over by his country. Yes, they touch on it in the movie. Yeah, chemical castration not, and all that. It's not it's the basis. It's not the focus. Yeah, exactly. The focus is the breaking of Enigma. And Which I've is seen what an Enigma. I want to see. <laughs> I have seen and touched and played with an Enigma machine. Mm. That group my dad's a part of. Mm-hmm. There's a guy who collects them. Oh, he was an engineer for Apple, an ex-engineer for Apple. God damn it! And he's got like three of them. And he brought one to one of the events, and I and I got to look at him. And I was like, oh, this is epic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very envious. Oh, they are awesome. <laughs> But um, uh, and that's a movie I want to see. So mm-hmm. maybe I'll get lucky, and you know, if I can convince Nikki to go see it with me, I don't know if she's interested or not. But she's she's big on encryption, so who will see? Um, then I'll get to see it. Hmm. And I take it. I mean, I already know you already went to go see uh, Big Hero Six. Yes. Uh, were you able to um, see uh, it again? Trick or <clears throat> convince her to actually no. go? Okay. No. But not you, interested. But you did see the teaser trailer for Pixar's next flick, right? Yeah, and I'm not sure what to make of it because I thought they were working on Good Dinosaur, which the, was supposed to be the next movie. But news has come out recently, and I verified this after we talked about it last week, that um, due to creative differences, the director was replaced and they rewrote most of the movie. So it's still in production. It just whoa, got whoa, delayed. Wait, wait. Rewrote? That means re-render. Yeah. Yeah. That movie was like way far I into know. the process. I know. But here's the thing, though. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta talk to my guy. I gotta contact him now and find out what the hell's going on. Because, well, here's the thing: is that there's not going to be a Pixar film in theaters uh, at all 2014. We, which is rare, which is very, very rare. And yeah. here's the other thing: is that the only one they're starting to tease right now is uh, Inside Out, which, which I'm curious about. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how this is going to work out when they're going to for lack of a better phrase, personify emotions in the head of a little girl, little teeny uh, preteen girl, which you got to know emotions are all over the freaking place anyways. Yeah. (laughs) So, well, you know what? At least they're doing it preteen girl. Cause (laughs) Uh, yeah, true. If things work freaky enough. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not sure where they're going to go with something like this. Um, you know, I didn't know where they were going to go with um, a lot of movies they've done. So, you know, point. I wasn't sure where the hell they were going to go with Cars. And that, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell are these people thinking? You know, they did Toy Story. They did Bugs Life. What, are they just trying to clone it with Cars? No, it's actually a fairly deep, different story. It, it is. It truly is. So, you know, if anybody's going to pull it off, it's going to be Pixar. Yeah. I do have to say, though, that... The little bits that we're starting to get, like these little character uh, pieces, uh, that just started showing up this week online, mm-hmm. and um, I had I blew up these images like you know high res as, as I can get them, and it's curious the types of textures they're using which are the characters and like their hair and the mm-hmm. the face and whatnot. It's almost like CG Muppet kind of style. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that little bit of that, that kind of slightly fuzzy texture to mm-hmm. them. Yeah, and the, and the color cueing is really fitting, too. I mean... Which I gotta you know, wonder just added how many extra weeks of rendering? <laughs> probably not that much. Once I got the shaders defined, it's it's all mm-hmm. the render farm. Sure. Um, Speaking so, of render farms, and we're tangent hopping a little bit. Go for it. You sent me an article on the Hyperion? technical aspects of Hyperion. Yes. Did you actually read that article? I did. Did you hear about their one petabyte render farm? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> and here's the thing, though. You what can... I'm hoping they do, what I'm hoping they do, I, I, they won't because they're freaking Disney. Mm-hmm. But what I would love to see them do is make the renderer publicly available. Render Man from Pixar. Pixar's original renderer. Is it publicly available now? You can publicly buy it. I mm-hmm. mean... It's not cheap. It's like I think ten grand, 
but it's still technically but, but feasibly it's, available. It's, it's yeah, I mean, it's not something that you or I are gonna buy. No, but a small, fairly low budget CG, nice mug. Uh, oh, you like that, small... don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Why the... am I not surprised? Yeah, come um, on. A fairly low budget CG house could afford to get the, the render man renderer. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other ones out there that are actually, they're not. Well, one of them's free, which is the Lux renderer. Mm -hmm. But um, there are other ones that are not quite free, but they're not horribly expensive, like um, the Octane engine, oh, which yes. is the one that uses the CUDA cores in your in your NVIDIA card. You can get the Octane engine with a plug-in for program of your choice for under a grand. Which, for small budding animators, that's perfect. <laughs> or, or, or someone like me who does 3D stuff in, in stills. Mm -hmm. It's like... The, the that's within the realm octane of... render with the poser plugin is i want to say just under 600 bucks after the euro conversion which is something you can easily like budget out for with over over a exactly few months. i could i could save up for a few months and get one exactly and get it lux is a free renderer the interface for it is the new one's coming out it's like uh, the interface for it's i want to say 60 bucks mm -hmm. and the render itself is free you know, there's stuff out there. I would love to see, and my point of why I'm circu circuitously going around this, I would love to see Disney pull a Tesla and say, okay, we've got this. All our patents are belong to you. All our patents are belong to us, but we'll open source the product. Hmm. Never going to happen. No, it's never going to happen at all. Especially for the sole fact that uh, there's another article out there right now it's regarding rendering. It was also on uh, fxguide.com, which is a great website to read. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, regarding just the the rise of you know CG animated films, it's more and more yeah. common for that stuff to happen. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, on average right now, all these movies are being rendered in 2K resolution because everything is just you know, you know 1080p. It's not a problem. You just throw it on a Blu-ray, well, 1080p, perfectly on, fine. In the theater, yeah. Exactly. But now the advent of 4K, which is thankfully at this point not widespread. It's there, it's available, but it's not mass adopted yet. And there's a there's actually finally a, a full station provider. Mm -hmm. I saw a commercial for them in Japan. Not surprising that. <laughs> not surprising that's where it hit first. It's, it's got to be a subsidiary. on-air 4K provider. Let me guess, a subsidiary of, of NHK? Um, no, I don't think it's NHK. Oh, I think wow. it's, um, uh, oh, you, you the ones it. who originally released K on. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, well. Yeah, either way. Okay. It, it's one of the major net Japanese networks. Okay. That's cool. I mean, but here's the thing, though. In order, you know, eventually once 4K and higher resolutions become mainstream, you're going to have to render stuff at a much higher resolution, which means either longer time, longer render times or massively larger render farms. Yes and no. I mean, if you're, unless you're rendering for T, I mean, for TV, for TV animation, yes, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. But for film animation, for your houses like Digital Domain, Pixar, mm -hmm. uh, Disney's Animation Studio, that's not because they're already rendering at 4K. 4K is film resolution. It's actually slightly better than film. Hmm. But um, especially with Sony's new 4K format, it's that is the closest to I mean it's it's film resolution without the grain. Very true. Although I do have to say though that the whole thing with 4K, especially with Blu-ray authoring right now, that there's now that's where it's going to get difficult. Exactly, because there's not because a the, standard the, format out there right now. There's like I think what, well, no, they're 16? still doing MPEG too. No, but like there's different within that. There's like 16 different uh, different standards that are used. Like um, you're talking about like you're talking about aspect ratios or no? I'm just talking about the the, the encoding aspect of everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem is one Blu-ray might look fantastic on you, you on your PS3, while another might just look like a standard DVD because of issues and compatibility and, and all. You're that. right, codec compatibilities. Yeah. Or compression compatibilities, rather. Yeah, that, 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 but I honestly, I don't see that being much of an issue. Mm -hmm. um, because right now, 4K, Sony's pretty much got the bag on that. Gotcha. Um, I think it's, I'm pretty, I mean, Sony and Samsung are going head-to-head -head at it right now. Mm -hmm. And honestly, <coughs> it's anybody's game because both companies have the bucks. 
Yeah, where, I could, but you, where I think Sony's going to pull out in the end, pardon the all euphemisms there, mm. where I think they're going to come out ahead is they've got the theater penetration. This is true, yes. And I think the fact that Sony's got, they can just basically say, oh, yeah, fine, Samsung, you know, come up with your format, do whatever you want to do, but hey, guess what? A, we own the patent on Blu-ray. You have to put it on something. Uh-huh. B, what, what you can we do? already we, we... have 4K in theaters. We've been doing it for X number of years. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is take that file, pop it into the editor, make some menus, voila, we're done. Mm -hmm. Suck on that, Samsung. And so I honestly think that Sony's going to come out ahead in this game. Well, Sony already, you know, with surprisingly the the uh, the help of Disney. Um, oh, yeah, they've been working together um, really well, surprisingly. You know, they killed HD DVD off, so. <laughs> well, okay, let's be honest. You know, yeah. This is, yeah but in the case of killing HD DVD, this isn't a case of VHS versus beta where porn made no, a VHS no. win. No, it wasn't. Beta was a better format. Blu-ray, or I'm sorry, yeah, Blu-ray was a much better format than HD DVD. Yeah, HD DVD, which is was a standard uh, evolutionary jump from DVD. Blu-ray was let's just jump on that and jump in a car and go. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, no, it was like let's screw that. Let's let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and say f it. Let's make let's change the color of the laser. Holy crap, stuff gets smaller because you're using a sh much shorter wavelength. Mm -hmm. You know. Red Ray isn't going to do jack because it's a bigger it's a bigger bandwidth. Exactly. Um, Sega in the in the chat room is pointing out, you know, then someone creates Red Ray. I don't think so because red red color spectrum is a wider spectrum. It's it's I mean mm -hmm. the nanometers are bigger. If anything, you're going to start getting into ultra vi ultraviolet ray or mm -hmm. or something like that. Then things get stuff gets real. <laughs> mm, yes, very much so. <laughs> start getting close to atomic walls and stuff. <laughs> Uh, see, we need to like start bringing some people in from that part of the industry just to talk about this because it's interesting. I don't know. As hell. Well, yeah, the only person I know who does that kind of authoring, yeah, we're not going to get him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always try for we other try. people. <sighs> All right. Okay, now that we've run that down that rat hole, <sighs> let's jump over to to video games real quick. Um, yes. And so the big thing that's been jumping all over the internet this uh, this past week is from Nexon, the. I don't know, famous or infamous creator of like Maple Story and stuff like that. Well, yeah, and they're 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 basically they're an Asian RPG company. Mm -hmm. um, some of their stuff has hit the states, mm -hmm. not much. Uh, like, isn't think, isn't Mabinagi theirs? Um, not one hundred percent sure. But if you go on their their website, there's only like six games right now that are available in U.S. markets. Right. Um, but at a huge game convention in South Korea. They finally offered the first look at a license that they picked up a few years ago, and that was Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. And you know, let me just play this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say, you better give me a Tachikoma, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. You can battle Tachikomas. Or have them on your side, hopefully. Yes. Now, how much of this is, um, I mean, is it all just an FPS? Or are we talking like something like Destiny here in the Gits universe or what? This is, as far as we know, it's, well, their official title on this is, it's an FPS, first person shooter, with a focus on hacking and customization of your cybernized body. So, okay. So it's, okay. Okay. Is it gonna get a West? Is it gonna get a Western release? No idea. As of right now, it is currently only planned for release in South Korea, and that's not even until the first half of 2015. Well, South Korea is the MMO capital of the world. Of course, from, let's be honest. And a lot of stuff that gets released over there, officially or unofficially, gets an English patch. So, yeah, but getting into it's a trick. I mean, they haven't exactly opened their doors yeah. for legitimate Western entry into these games exactly um here uh, that was your first time watching this right yes okay so initial thoughts were ooh shiny oh shiny um i was more impressed by the uh the pre-rendered cg of matoko and company mm. uh you know of kusanagi and bato and everybody that impressed me more than the gameplay 
gameplay I looked at, I'm like going, okay, it's Battlefield Modern Warfare. Crisis, Call of Duty. I mean, yeah, uh, it's a freaking FPS. Yeah. It's, you know, There's not I'm much having you can... the same reaction to the, to this, comparing it to, to other military FPSs. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people were comparing Overwatch to Team Fortress 2. Yes. And I'm looking at this going, it's Battlefield with Kusanagi. Yeah, you, they got to get skin back. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, now, now that being said, that pre-rendered CGI is pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> well done yes a lot of people are crying foul because it, it doesn't have the core values of what made git so popular and so beloved and, and oh, I look, they are focusing on a very small faction a uh, small section of that universe i mean a lot of there was a lot of fantastic over-the-top action that happened in the movies the manga and of course the uh, the tv series Right, but it was more the story itself. There's so much deeper. Oh God, yeah, it's 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 one of the main things why a lot of us got in got into Ghost in the Shell in the first place. Oh yeah, was totally. The com combination of the story and the world building and every you know, Cyberpunk yeah. is awesome. Um, exactly. Speaking of which, that's another game that was supposed to be coming out by now that appears to be dead in the water. Ah, really? Yeah, the all the information I could find. I went looking for it the other week. All the information I could find on it is over two years old. That sucks. It, yeah, it really sucks because they had the original creator of the game of the of the pen and paper game. Mm -hmm. Well, buying into it and doing a video talking about it. You can always see. You know, there are, there have been. I'm not, I'm being very overly hopeful at this point there have been del massively uh, massive delays on games like this in the past and it may see the light of day just hope it doesn't become like another you know duke nukem forever kind of thing <laughs> yeah no <laughs> or it's like yeah, you finally got it it's shit but you finally <laughs> got it <laughs> congratulations we spent 12 or 15 20 years polishing a turd it's still a turd <laughs> yeah 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 though uh, if this ever got an official release date set, I'd be interested in checking it out. I wouldn't be... I'd rather get PSO2 first, honestly. Yeah, I need, I need to reinstall that and play that. I mean, I've got a PSO2 account. I can't Same do man. much with it, but I've got one. <laughs> I just can't read 80% of the freaking menu. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> Although everything's very, very pretty to look at. Oh my god, it's very pretty. <laughs> it's very PSO. Yes. but uh... Uh, Here's the thing, though. All these different MMOs, I mean... There's a dime a dozen all over the place, especially or if you go over to, you know, more to the Asian countries, they're all over the place. Well, yeah, no, there's a gajillion. Like, and there were there are a few other ones that have attempted to make it over to the States. Mm -hmm. um, there was one. Oh, there was one I was in the beta for that. I uh, another case, you know, I bought the collector's edition, <laughs> bought the lifetime account and the game tits <laughs> up. I, I, I honestly wonder if I'm the Apollo smile of MMO sometimes. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, that's not true, but anyway, <laughs> you know there were a few of them that were originally came from South Korea. I mean, you could tell the the design aesthetic was mm -hmm. this was in South Korea first. Yes, and most of them that have come over here have gone tits up. Mm -hmm. um, Mabanagi, Dofus, Maple Story, mm -hmm. and there's another one. Um, are the exceptions? Yeah. So, I mean, then you get a lot of also Western design MMOs that that show up and die. Case in point, um, Enter the Matrix. Yeah, that had so much hype behind it, and it died within what two years? I was it died within six months. Mm. I was in the beta for that one. The beta was clunky as hell, mm. buggy as hell, and and it's just like, okay, you're you're jumping into the world, you're running around, you're trying to be like Neo and do stuff, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm running around a beat up set of the projects, getting shot at. You know? <laughs> but it's always interesting to see when MMOs that get some sort of uh, traction, traction, and then they make it like 500,000 players, maybe just under a million players, and then they try to expand beyond that, or just keep it to that that group, that relatively small group. It's enough to make a paycheck. Exactly. Um, case in point. One I've always been interested, but always hesitant to jump into, was Eve Online. Um, just for the sole fact of it's spacefaring battles, I can build a ship and customize it to my own design, and it's a 
it's treated it's like accountants in outer space yes and that's the other thing that a lot of it it's <laughs> it's it's space spreadsheets the game you know <laughs> pretty much it's excel sci-fi excel i mean like, here's a quick shot of what you would normally see in like a, a, a battle i mean how do you try to go through all of that and understand it i mean yeah it's one eve is one of those games that unless you've been playing it for years there it's re- you can't come into it as a new player mm-hmm. uh, it's it's i mean the, the the learning curve is way too steep not to mention that griefing is a real and present you know issue oh, yeah in there. oh yeah um, it, it's it's a lot it's, it's kind of like the the conan had the same problem mm-hmm. when it came out although eve online's been around a lot longer than that obviously yes um now that all being said the people who are behind it ccp they know how to get people interested, and they released this new uh, video that when I watched it, I was like, wow, that's pretty freaking cool. And then I realized, no, it's Space Spreadsheets the game. <laughs> I can't get well, it. Well, are you talking about the one, the, the spin off of Eve, or is this an actual no, part of Eve? This is an actual part of Eve, telling, showing people what you can do in Eve, or at least a part okay, of it. Because there's, really cool. there's been a couple spin offs that are coming out. Mm-hmm. But this one, they just call it This Is Eve, and it's actually pretty badass. Okay. Okay. Yes, that does make it look a lot more fun than it is. And all of that uh, actually happened in game. They uh, the, when they all warped in and Rooks and Kings were right there, like, "Whoa, crap!" <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty awesome. That and they're like, "Okay, we won this battle." And then the Titan, which is their largest ship in game right now, which cost uh, thousands of uh, the equivalent of uh, like seven or eight thousand dollars U.S. dollars, and that comes in, they're like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> Um, well, wasn't there a group a while back that had that had actually saved up and bought like three Titans, mm-hmm. and like four groups got together, teamed up, and just took them all out before they came on fully online? Yeah, the, the, again, the whole griefing thing. Um, there's also very famous instances of um, espionage and piracy. There's actually a really big one uh, a few years back where this group was hired to infiltrate and destroy this cor- massive organization from the in- inside. And over the course of 10 months, they got to every single layer of the uh, the organization. Um, became One of them became, like, second in command of the entire fleet and whatnot and convinced, um, like, the, 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 the CEO of it to... Um, take out his most expensive ship and two of even more expensive ships uh, to guard it as they go out to as a show of power and then sent out one little code word and every single member that they uh, infiltrated just cleaned out all of their resources blew up a bunch of ships I mean like it was it was tens tens and tens of thousands of dollars of stuff just either wiped wiped out or stolen uh, there was a massive um, battle a few months back that on average, like some of the major battles, you'll lose maybe about four or five Titan ships, which is about seven, eight thousand dollars US each. In that one, it was something like seventy-five Titans were destroyed. It was something unbelievably massive. Hundreds of thousands of people were in this in this uh this one battle. And those things are really, really freaking cool. What they don't say and they don't tell you is that the months and months it takes to get to that point is all this. So. Yeah, yeah, and that, see, that's the point. It's like, okay, sure, get me in there, but you know, again, steep learning curve. Yeah, to get those cool ships is going to take you for freaking ever. Because mm-hmm. everything, like your skill assets, and when you're building stuff, isn't in game time. It's in real time, real right? Lifetime. And PVE doesn't exist. Mm-mm. Nope. You know, if you're not it, uh, like it or not, the game is 100% PVP. You can't, you can't escape that. Yeah, but enough of spreadsheets in space. <laughs> no, no, there's something out there that Michael really likes. <laughs> there's something Michael wants to know about really, really bad. Yes. Um, a few days ago, Yamaha in Japan had a uh, a live stream up, some new product announcements, and one of the um, higher ups at Krypton showed up to announce Luca version four X. And they decided not only to showcase a, a new version of her outfit, which is a, a bit more... Gracie? Yeah, let, let's call it that. Um, but also released a video showcasing the new voice banks for her, which 
uh, like with other um, voice banks, you were able to emit certain emotions when um, using their voices. The thing is, though, that these ones, uh, you have power, whisper, cute, soft, husky, and falsetto. Um, that can be applied to each note with using uh, Luca's new voice pack. And they released a new video uh, showcasing some of it. So let's play a little bit of that, because I know Michael is uh, very, very interested in this. Just a bit. No release dates? 2015. And it's going to be about uh, a little over 17,000 yen. So okay, that's about that's about average bucks. for them. Yeah, that's about average for those units. It's actually a little less, because if I remember correctly, hang on. As he's bringing uh, how much it was. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. But I, I do like. Yeah, this the, was, uh, if I remember correctly, he said about like this one was like uh, 190. 190 K? bucks. Okay. Or 19k. Yeah, because it dropped two zeros. But it averaged out to just under 200. Gotcha. Okay. But In yeah, Japan. I do like it. <laughs> I do like the fact that with this one, there's a lot more expressiveness that you can do with the voice pack. Yeah, there is. Um, I, I, I'm wondering how much of that was processed. Um, I'm kind of... I would say it's probably more than someone processed for the sole fact that it is the trailer video to try to hype people to uh, pick this up. Which is weird that they chose. I mean, that they only showed the one song, and they showed a moody house elect. Well, I wouldn't say house, but a moody electronica piece. Yeah, which wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong, but I'd mm -hmm. like to see more examples of it. And I'm sure we will. I want to hear more. We'll we'll get more of that later on. I'm sure, as as with like when the the, the version threes of all the voice packs when they were starting to come out, uh, like the months beforehand, we got like somewhere around five or eight uh, individual. Um, uh, previews preview videos so i'm sure with something like this we'll get more information uh very soon that art style hmm. um I, I i'm i'm curious <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's 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 a it's i uh, i'm not so thrilled about them effectively <laughs> digging into her nipples but you know whatever <laughs> um it, just wait, you know, if this is the official uh, cover for this, how soon will there be a figure of it, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, to wrap things up, as we always do, Michael, what have you been watching? Not a lot, actually. Um, I've been doing a lot of Warlords Drain Orb, but mm. stumbled across something on Netflix <clears throat> that is really cool. Now, you know, I, I don't know how many of our audience knows, but you, Jason, know that I'm really big into abandoned places. Uh, urban exploration, yes. that's a big thing for me. It's fun. <clears throat> and I just like, you know, seeing that that those like abandoned places and whatnot. Mm -hmm. There's a series that they only did apparently six episodes called Forgotten Planet. And what it is is they take two abandoned areas and uh, do an episode about them. The first one is Pripyat. Chernobyl, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, and a place called Pitcher, I want to say Minnesota. <laughs> I think it was Pitcher, Minnesota. Um, that had basically, um, they became abandoned because of industrial disasters. Okay. Um. Only in the case of Pitcher, it wasn't so much industrial disaster as this was the place that um, was a lead and zinc mining town mm. that they had. There's a stuff called chat that they just stacked up like there's mountains of this stuff. And it was tainting the water, tainting the land, poisoning the residents to the point where they as recent as 2006, I think. No, 2009. Hmm. They were they, 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 the government just said, you know what, get out. Here's the money. We're buying you out. You don't have a choice. Wow. So this whole town is just frozen in time. Ghost town. Uh, it has to be now because of safety features, but right. yeah, or safety issues. But yeah, and these piles of this material are still there. 
So instead of trying to, you know, clear everyone out and then try to clean it up, they're just like, everyone's out, leave it. Well, there was, well, I don't know. I don't know the details on that. Okay. Um, there, the, the land was originally Indian land mm-hmm. or Native American property that got leased. Okay. Um, and it has since been fallen back into the ownership of the Indians, of the Native American tribes. And it was funny. They point out, they're like, you know, ironically, you know, they came in, they screwed up their land, gave their land back to them, screwed up. And it's the Native American tribes who are saying, okay, you know what? You idiots wouldn't do it. We will. They're taking care of the cleanup. Huh. They're actually working to clean it up, which is pretty cool. Wow. But the series itself is fascinating as hell. That's actually, I have to check that one out. I'll add it to my queue. Cause... <laughs> yes, add it to your queue. Cause What's, it's really cool. I find it funny that everyone keeps on adding more and more stuff to my queue. And instead of going through the queue, <laughs> I find other stuff to watch. <laughs> Um, most recently, I haven't really watched too much lately. The only show I really caught up on, aside from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., is Constantine, which keeps on getting better and better. And the I'm, ratings I'm, keep I'm, on... I haven't seen this Fridays, but okay. I've seen the, the other ones. Some really good thing. Like, there's already a, a few shows that have already hit the chopping block on mm-hmm. a number of the networks. Constantine's ratings keep going up. Good. So good. <laughs> well, it's, it's really well written. It's well done. Um, well produced, when they introduced well acted. Pop at midnight. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Oh, great, so that was good. Epic. <laughs> uh, you got all the one-liners in it. It's so good. Well, the, well, it's not just the one-liners, but the the overall story and oh, the drama of yes. it. Yes, it's wow, just wow. And the fact that NBC is willing to back something like this is like that's yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm points prop- to NBC for doing it. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but aside from those, um, I've actually been catching myself. I've always been a fan of Anthony Bourdain, and mm-hmm. you know he has his, his latest series, No Reservations, uh, on CNN. Um, but I've actually started going back to some of his old stuff for like Travel Channel and, and whatnot, and you can find them, you know, on like on demand and online. And so I've been watching stuff for like Jamaica and Russia and Israel, and mm-hmm. and just watching someone with that kind of mentality that you know. I'm just a human walking through this and whatnot. I'm not going to change you guys. You guys are not going to change me. Let's see what's going on here, you know? And mm-hmm. just enjoying, like, not only the food, but the culture. Stuff like that always interests me. And well, when Bourdain's, I... Bourdain's videos are always really good that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he, he he's not, he doesn't come in with a, I'm an American, and in America, we don't do this kind of crap, and blah, right. blah, blah, blah. No, he's just like, he's a sponge. Mm-hmm. He walks in and just absorbs. Exactly. And it's it's definitely one of those things where I can, you, you watch one episode and it's like oh there's another episode, and oh you can watch it more online and next thing you know you've watched like seven episodes easily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much all I've been watching lately. So, well that I also, I've also been because I don't have live TV anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, we wait till the end of the week and then we watch all the at midnights at once. Nice. That's and... that's, that's a good way to binge it. Yeah, pretty much. Although we still participate in the, uh, I don't know if you've been watching my Twitter lately, but I've been participating in the uh, the hashtag wars. The hashtag wars every night. Very nice. I, the, my personal favorite latest one that I did was, uh, the, the the latest hashtag was uh, uh, lamer criminals. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was, we were like thinking, you know, like um, uh, there was Teddy Ruxpin Bundy, stuff like that. <laughs> um, that's not what I came up with. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, then people started bringing in fictional bad guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, on that point, I just put in Garage Heck Wimper. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well done. Well we've done. been having fun with those. Good, 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 good. It's getting me to actually tweet again, so there you go. Hey. Get you back into it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny. We, we thought we were going to be a short episode, but we hit an hour again. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> I need food. Yes, <laughs> that's all I can say. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. That is it for this week. Um, we will be back next week. Um, I'm sure we'll all, you know you guys can share stories of stuff you experienced or stuff you decided to pick up. I probably won't be picking up a damn thing, but uh, I'm sure I'll be pleasantly entertained by everybody's. Uh, oh my God, this guy did this and whatnot. <laughs> Uh, yeah it's gonna be interesting so so 
And I take it you'll be with family, Michael, on uh, for Turkey Day. No, we will be working. Um, I'm it's, it's double time. Are you kidding me? Mm, good point. Um, no, I will be working. Um, oh yes, another one. Should our participated in a while she did garage hell scream for ice cream uh, <laughs> uh but no we're gonna be working um and it's just gonna be me and nikki we're just gonna do something private don't want no family no drama mm. i'm kind of doing something a little similar um me oh, you're going to the mouse yeah i'm gonna go to disney um that should be interesting it's turkey day what are you gonna do i'm going to diddy land <laughs> You well, have you, the pass. I already, I, you can do that. Yeah. I don't have the pass anymore. And uh, we have reservations for um, for dinner in the park, so I get to have a Mickey Turkey Day. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I don't have to clean with all, with all the single anything. dads and moms. <laughs> I'm just taking pictures of everybody crying into their soup. You know. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do, don't go to a De- don't go to a Denny's or a Caro's. On, on yeah, Thanksgiving. It's yeah. all single dads. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm sure I'll have plenty of stories about that for next week. So, All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, stay tuned probably for a very, very short post show, but uh, we w- we'll be back next week. So for From My Mother's Basement, I'm Jason. And I am. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you, everybody.